Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. I'm glad you called. No, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. Some boy I know just bought himself a gun, and unless he's stopped, he aims to get a big bang out of life. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Grand Gamble. It is early morning in New York, the time of day generally reserved for slumber. But there's plenty of action at Dana's, a gambling spot on Manhattan's east side. All of which impresses the two gentlemen standing by the roulette wheel. Well, what do you say, Mr. Calvin? You seen enough? More than enough, Eli. How long has it been going on? Jackie tells me six weeks. What do you figure the take is? Around six or seven G's a night. Not bad. Where does Dana keep himself? In the office, over there. What do you say we drop in and congratulate him? Now? Now. Maybe we better wait. I said now. You're the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss, Eli. Let's not forget it. What do you want me to do? Just stay out here and see that we're not disturbed. Yes? Hello, Dana. Calvin. Yeah. Well, I... Must say, this is a surprise. I meant it to be. Oh, uh, keep your hands off that buzzer. I just assumed we weren't interrupted. Now, look, Calvin. Sit down. You can't come in here oh, and... Oh, can't. Oh. Now, look, you crumb. This is my territory. From 86th Street to 94th. Since when? Since all the time. You're going to close up shop. And if I don't? I'll do it for you. I'll give you 24 hours. You'll give who 24 hours? Well, aren't you the sly one? Aren't I? Now, do you leave quietly, or do they carry you out? You better put that gun away, Dana. It's out of character. Is it? Yeah. You're not mad enough to pull a trigger. Go on, I dare you. Well, what are you waiting for? You got a right to gun me? Shoot. You can tell him it was a heist. I'm warning you, Calvin. You're warning me. Give me that gun. Let me go. Come on, drop it. Oh! You shouldn't have tried to bluff me, fella. Because I really got a great hand. Come on, Zaina, get up. You can't quit now. I got time for another couple of rounds. Yes. You're home early. Daddy. Daddy, what happened? Nothing. But look at it. I tell you, you, it's nothing, Joan. Let me sit down. I'm going to call a doctor. You'll do nothing of the kind. Tomorrow. But your face. It... I had a little accident, that's all. I fell down at the club. Can't I get you anything? Just the phone book. Who do you want? I'll look it up for you. See if there's an Al Romero listed. Al Romero? Yes. Couldn't be the same one. Couldn't be what same one? The Al Romero I read about. The one who was tied up with murder, Incorporated. No, no, this is a different boy. You're not telling the truth. Okay, so it's the same one. And I got a job for him. You happy now? Oh, you don't mean that. Don't give odds, Johnny. Daddy, what's come over you? I've seen the light. I just learned when you're in my racket, you can't use kid gloves. Vince Calvin was around to see me tonight. Calvin? Yeah. That's why I look this way. So from now on, I play his rules. You don't know what you're saying. Try to understand, Joan. I'm doing this for you. I want you to have the best of everything. But I don't want it that way. You don't get it any other way. Mr. Calvin taught me that. Now, give me that phone. No, I won't let you do it. You won't? (gasps) Sorry, baby. You might as well learn the facts of life now. Information? I'd like the phone number of Al Romero. Oh, Angel, you don't know what you... Oh, 
won't go away. Oh, for Pete's sake. Wait a minute. Where's my robe? I said, wait a minute. What's the... Are you mic wearing? Well, it all depends. Depends? On the time of day. Before seven, I'm not myself. I know it's late, but I've got to see you. Well, come back in the morning. It's no good. Time is of the essence. I don't know what I'll do with you. Oh, now take it easy. But you don't understand. Well, I never will at this rate. Now sit down. Thank you. I suppose I should introduce myself. I suppose you should. My name is Joan Andrews. Joan Andrews. Yes. If you say so. Don't you believe me? I never question a lady's word at four o'clock in the morning. But I wouldn't advise you to come back at five with that story. Why? Well, if you're Joan Andrews, how come the initials on your purse are J.D.? Oh, this... This belongs to a friend. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, Angel, have it your way. I tell you, it's the truth. Well, let's hear the rest. Well, I'm engaged to a man named Vince Calvin. Vince Calvin? You? Do you know him? Yeah. So I won't offer my congratulations. Well, Vince has been threatened. How do you know? He told me. Now, go on. That's all there is to it. I want you to see nothing happens to him. Now, Angel, enough is enough. You can't expect me to buy that. I swear it's true. Does Calvin know you're here? No, and he mustn't find out. He thinks he can take care of himself. Well, from what I know of that gent, he can. But I can't afford to gamble. You've got to protect him. Why don't you go to the cops? Because I don't want any publicity. Vince would kill me if there was. And this is the man you're engaged to? I didn't mean it that way. How did you mean it? Look, Mr. Waring, it all comes down to this. Either you want the case or you don't. I get $100 a day plus expenses. That's all right. I'll pay you in advance. Hey, you're really on the level about this, aren't you? Well, what did you think? Well, frankly, Joan, I don't know. Where can I reach oh, you? Oh, don't bother calling me. I'll call you. Okay. But keep in touch with the office. I hope for your sake there won't be any startling developments. <laughs> That's funny. You must have money in the bank, Eli. You're talking to yourself. There's a blue Nash behind us. It's a very attractive color. So what? I'd swear that was the same car I saw on Broadway. You're imagining things. I tell you, it's the same one, Calvin. He's trailing us. Turn up 84th. It's one way, going east. That's all right. I'll take care of the ticket. Let's see if he makes the same mistake. Well? What did I tell you? He's coming right after us. Okay. Stop right here. Give me a gun. What are you going to do? Wait for our friend. Yeah, but don't you think we... I don't... think you worry too much. Stay here. What's the matter, comrade? Having trouble? How's that? I asked if you were having trouble. Oh, well, yeah. I guess I lost my way. I guess you did. Get out. What for? I want to look at you. Well, listen, Frank. Are you going to get out of that car? Is that thing loaded? What do you think? I think I'd better get out. Now, uh, walk over to that lamppost. Sure, anything you say. Hold it. That's fine. Just keep your hands where they are. How's this? Well, uh... What's the idea, Waring? <laughs> If it isn't Vince Calvin, certainly is a small world. Too small. Why are you tailing me? Me? Tailing you? Eli saw you on Broadway. No, no, it must have been two other guys. I was just headed home. So you go the wrong way up a one-way street? We all make mistakes. And you're going to pay for yours. I wouldn't try that again. Who put you on to tailing me? None of your business. I got a good mind. I wouldn't try it. Well, keep out of my way, you understand? I don't like being crowded. Oh, with 10 million people in town, you've got to expect I it. I mean it, Waring. If I catch you within gunshots, so help me, I'll let you have it. Now, anyway. What for? I like it here. Okay. Maybe I can arrange for you to hang around for quite a while. Come. I'm looking for Vince Calvin. Who are you? If I wanted you to know, I would have had them announce me. Eli! Eli! If you're calling your stooge, you're wasting your time. Where is he? What difference does it make? 
I look, comrade, I don't know what your game is. Solitaire. I play it with this. What's the idea of the gun? This is how I deal them. Would you like to see one off the top? What made Dana think I'd fall for this? Huh? Well, didn't Dana send you around? You can't expect me to divulge the name of my client. That wouldn't be ethical. Now, look, Buster, you're not kidding me. I don't frighten easy. You mean to tell me you're not scared? Not a bit. Glad to hear that. There's one thing I admire. It's a guy with plenty of moxie. It's a pity to have to spill yours. Oh, a real pity. We Americans have been justly accused of living at too fast a pace. Not only are we living too fast, we are also driving too fast. On the highways, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. That year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents, blamed on excessive speed. That is the bloody price tag on too much speed, the cost that you may pay sooner or later for a few minutes saved by speeding. Slow down for safety's sake, and you'll be doing your part in the current campaign against the number one killer on the highways. Initiate and support your local enforcement drives against speeders. And remember, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Mike Waring had his run-in with Vince Calvin, the man he was hired to protect. Now, at Mike's apartment, we find him recuperating from the encounter. Yeah? Hiya, Mike. Oh, what do you want, Sergeant? Oh, no, that's no way to greet an old and trusted friend. What happened to you? Never mind. Hey, let me see. Will you get your hands off me? Well, if I was you, I'd trade this head in for another. Or better still, you could grow one. Look, Sergeant, I'm in no mood for kibitzing. Well, looks like someone really did a job on you. Well, you ought to see the other guy. I did. He looks even worse. What are you mumbling about? Why'd Calvin slug you? How did you know it was Calvin? Now, you're not the only detective in the crowd. Well, when I get my hands on him... I can arrange that. He's at the morgue. The morgue? He was gunned at 9 o'clock tonight. Is that on the level? You know I never joke about things like murder. Who did it? Did you? Don't be an idiot. Well, you got to admit we can make out a pretty convincing case. After all, he bounced you around. I went around killing everyone who bounced me. Yeah, I know, I know. You could fill your own personal cemetery. Still and all, it doesn't look so good for you. Who says so? Lieutenant Coram. Oh, that jerk. That jerk can pull you in and throw away the key. What gave with you and Calvin? I was tailing him for a client. Why? She thought he was in danger. Oh, she must have had inside information. Who is she? Joan Andrews. You say that like you don't believe it. Well, I don't. So even though you knew she was a phony, you took the case. Oh, she may have been a phony, but her money wasn't. What'd she have against Calvin? Nothing. Look, Mike, if you're holding out Why on me... Why should I? She told me they were engaged. And you bought that story? Calvin's a married man. Well, I didn't know that. For a smart guy, there's a lot you didn't know. You better find this client of yours. Sure, tell me how. Well, that's your headache. But you better dig her up and do it fast. Lieutenant Coram. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you learn about my running with Calvin? Eli told me. You mean Eli Proctor, Calvin Stooge? Yeah. (laughs) He knows all about Calvin's operations, doesn't he? Including the one Calvin did on you. Yeah. Well, maybe he knows something about my mysterious client, too. You want to join me? No, no, thanks. I've already talked to him. But don't let that stop you. No, you go right ahead. Have your fun. You sure you won't join me in a drink, Waring? Positive. Uh, You don't know what you're missing. 
And I'll take my chances, Eli. Why did you tell the cops Calvin slugged me? It was my duty, wasn't it? Oh, you're the kind of a guy who never forgets it. Not me. Well, let's see how good that memory is. Did Calvin have any enemies? Nary a soul. Just a big, lovable guy, huh? That was Vince. We're really going to miss him around here. Yeah, I'll bet. Who's going to handle the business now that he's gone? I don't know, but if his wife wants me, I'll be available. Well, that's big of you. Well, that's the sort of a guy I am. Mm -hmm. She'd be a lot easier to swindle than Vince was. You want to watch that mouth, fella? <laughs> I'm sorry. You see, I washed it this morning. Can't seem to do a thing with it. Know a girl about five feet two, blue eyes, blonde hair, pretty? No, but I'd love to meet her. Me too. How did she know that Calvin was in trouble? Maybe she was planning to knock him off. So she hired me to prevent it? You didn't do too good a job, did you? That was Calvin's fault. He never should have slugged me. If I were around, this might not have happened. Well, that's life for you. Or death. What does Mrs. Calvin look like? You're barking up the wrong tree, Waring. She's a redhead. Mm -hmm. Did he have any girls on the string? Nope. Come on, Eli, open up. Tell you, he didn't have any trouble with a dame. But he did have trouble with a man. Who? Arthur Dana. The guy who runs the club on 86? Yeah, Vince closed him up. Well, then Dana might have had it in for Calvin. Huh? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Eli. You've been a big help. You're not leaving already. Yeah, but I'll be back. See what you can dream up in the meantime. Yes? Well, if it isn't Joan Andrews. What? Well, that's the name you used 36 hours ago. Are you out of your mind? If I am, Angel, it's little girls like you who are responsible. Get out. Now, now, Joanie, I didn't throw you out when you came calling on me. You're crazy. You don't remember coming to my apartment at 4 o'clock yesterday morning? I came to your apartment? Yes, you did. And you used the name Joan Andrews. Just to keep the record straight, what are you calling yourself today? Look, are you going to get out of here? Wait a minute, of course. You must be Dana's daughter. I was a sap not to have seen it before. Why did you hire me to protect Vince Calvin? Vince Calvin? I never even heard of the man. Well, your father did. Were you afraid he was going to kill Calvin? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Angel, I rarely slug a woman, but in your case, I'll be glad to make an exception. Don't you dare. Well, where's your father? He's not here. Dana! Dana! I tell you, he's not here. He flew to the coast on business yesterday morning. What time? He caught the 4.30 plane. But Calvin was killed at 9. Well, that proves my father couldn't have done it. You're lying. If you don't believe me, check with Creighton Airlines. Thanks for the advice, Angel. That's one tip I intend to take. Hello? That's you, Johnny? Daddy, where are you calling from? Los Angeles. What'd you think? When are you coming home? Maybe a week or ten days. Try to get back as soon as possible. Why? What's the matter? I can't talk on the phone. Where are you staying? Why? I want to write to you. Vince Calvin was murdered yesterday. I know. I heard about it out here. Well, Mike Waring is investigating the matter. Falcon? How did he get involved? Well, that's a long story. I'll go into it in my letter. What's the name of your hotel? Oh, it won't do you any good, honey. I'm checking out. I don't like it here. But how will I reach you? Well, you can't. You'll have to wait for me to get in touch with him. But Mike Waring thinks... I that... don't care what he thinks. You told him I was on the coast? Yes. Well, there's my alibi. When he hears I called you from... Daddy, that was your dime being released into the payphone. Uh, listen, Joan... You're in New York. You've been here all the time. Forget it. But if you were in New York... I told you to forget it. Take care of yourself, Joni. Don't worry about Mr. Waring. I'll take care of him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get your bets down. The gentleman is coming out. And eight's the point. I got two bits, says he's right, Eli. Go away, boy, you bother me. You busy? What does it look like? And the gentleman got himself a big ten. I would a word with you. Would you? Yeah, unless you want me to make a nuisance of myself out here. Jackie. Yeah? Take over the table. All right. I knew you'd see the light. Follow me. I did that once, and it didn't work out so well. Huh? The other night, wound up with a peach of a headache, remember? It was your own fault. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is quite a layout. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, you really moved in, haven't you? Come on, Waring, get to the point. Well, I was wondering if you had any more leads. 
Leeds? Yeah, for Calvin's murder. What about his missus? What about her? You think she might have knocked him off? Are you nuts? Where's her motive? Oh, she might have wanted to get her hands on all this. Don't talk like a schmo. She don't even know what this thing is worth. Well, that's going to make it awfully convenient for you. Now listen, where? Well, isn't it? If you came here to needle me... Apparently I succeeded, eh? All right, can you think of anyone else who might have had it in for Calvin? What's wrong with Dana? Nope, he's got an alibi. Who says so? I do. He was on his way to Los Angeles at the time. Couldn't he have hired someone else to do the job? Hmm? A torpedo. Ooh, I never thought of that. Well, it's time you did. Yes, you may have something there. Of course, there's only one thing wrong with that theory. What? If Dana hired a pro to do the job, he wouldn't quit now. What do you mean? Well, his daughter must have told him I was shoving my nose into this business. If Dana felt I was a source of danger to him, he'd give orders for that gunman to go to work again. Well? Well, the mere fact that I'm alive proves you're wrong. Still, it was an original thought, Eli. Let me know if you get any more bright ideas. Money and wearing. What Just the... keep your hands where they are. Who the devil are you? Me? I'm a nobody. Not with that gun in your mitt. That makes you a big man. Yeah, I guess it does. Kick the door shut. Hmm? I said kick it shut. Sure, anything you say. Now, park yourself on that sofa. Hey, don't I know you from someplace? I don't think so. Yeah, you must be the citizen who got Calvin. How did you figure that out? Oh, I'm real smart. Well, then maybe you can answer this. If I'm the guy who killed Calvin and you know it, what do you suppose is going to happen to you? Well, that's a very good question. Ain't it? I'll give you two minutes to dream up the answer. Any day, any hour now, perhaps this very minute, a tragic moment in our nation's history will occur. Somewhere, a careless driver will wreck an automobile, or a jaywalking pedestrian will be struck down. Another life will be snuffed out in an automobile accident, suddenly, needlessly. Why will this particular accident stand out in history? Because for the first time, this death will tip the balance scales of the two mass killers of Americans, war and the automobile downward on the automobile side. Each of these three wholesale killers, destroyers of life, has killed about 1,005,000 Americans. War took its vast toll in nearly 177 years, the automobile in a mere 52 years. Once the automobile fatality side of the scale tilts downward, it will probably stay down. Unless you and I, as drivers and pedestrians, become safer and act to reduce this senseless slaughter on the highways... Automobiles will keep on killing Americans at a far faster rate than wars. What can we do about it? We can demand that our civic organizations and communities act immediately to make drivers more careful and the highway safer. Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Just 90 seconds has passed since Mike Waring entered his apartment to find it occupied. Worse yet, the new tenant moved in with all the necessary hardware. Well, what do you say, Waring? You look like you've been thinking. You come up with the answer? What answer? What's going to happen to you? Oh, well, if I were judging solely by appearances, I'd say someone doesn't want me around. <laughs> Smart boy. Hmm. Would you mind telling me who you're working for? What difference does it make? Well, I'd hate to get sent to my grave without knowing who's responsible. That's the way it wakes out sometime. Was it Dana? Where do you want it? Do I have a choice? Sure, I ain't a bad guy. If you leave it to me, I'll put it right in the back of your head. That way you won't feel a thing. Thanks, loads. I mean it. I never had a complaint yet. I bet. Okay, on your feet. Well, what's the point? I'm only going to get knocked off him again. Okay, wise guy, try to do your favor. I'm ready to return it. If I were you, I'd drop that gun. Would you? Yeah. 
Don't look now, but there's an ugly police sergeant right behind you. Think I'm going to fall for that tired routine? Why not? What? Watch it, sergeant. <laughs> Corbett. I'm all right. What about our friend? Well, I can't say as much for him. Is he? Yep. This time, Corbett, you really called your shots. Hello, Eli. Waring. Yeah, I want you to meet a friend of mine. No, don't bother introducing us, Mike. We've met six years ago, wasn't it, Eli? When you and Calvin first started. He had a joint on West 8th Street. It was just a little... Uh, let's not start reminiscing, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got carried away. Sit down. No, thanks. We won't be staying long. We just dropped by to thank you. What for? Well, if it hadn't been for you, we never would have cleaned up this mess. What are you mumbling about? We solved Calvin's murder. Swell. But I don't well, see how... Well, you were the one who advanced the theory that there might be a professional killer involved. And you were right. Did you find him? Yep. Waiting for me at my place. His name was Tony Abruzzio. At least, that's how he's been identified at the morgue. The morgue? Well, it was either him or Waring, and uh, like a fool, I made the wrong choice. I doubt it. I think you were aiming for me, but you're such a rotten shot. Look, if you guys got nothing better to do... Oh, we have, Eli. You see, before Tony died, he named you as the party who hired him. You're lying. He even found your check on his body. You couldn't. I paid him... Cash? (laughs) All right, Sergeant, what are you waiting for? Make out like a cop and do your duty. I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. But you see the position I was in. I was afraid my father intended to kill Calvin. And that's why you hired me? Yes. Well, didn't you know your father was in New York during the time of the murder? Well, I only discovered that later. It seems he canceled out on his trip. Then when he heard that Calvin was murdered... He got he... nervous and decided to play it as though he were in Los Angeles all along. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That was silly. He played right into Eli's hands. He was just lucky that Eli gave himself away. Now, that I don't understand. Well, you see, Angel, it all came down to motive. Eli was the only one who actually profited by Calvin's murder. With Calvin gone, it was a cinch for him to move in and take over the club. But what about Mrs. Calvin? No, she didn't figure to give him any trouble. He even admitted to me that she didn't know the score. Weren't you guessing all this? Well, sure, but I had nothing else to go on. Then when Eli suggested a professional gunman might have done the actual job for your dad, I decided to do a little deep-sea fishing. I don't follow you. Well, I told him that if your father was behind the kill, he'd certainly take care of me. Oh, so that's why he sent that Tony Abruzzio around, hmm? Mm-hmm. He really rose to the bait. So I got together with Corbett and laid a trap. Then it was no accident that the sergeant turned out. Oh, no, he was behind me right along. And I still am. Oh, no. (laughs) Just thought I'd see how you're getting along. (laughs) Mind if I join you? I certainly do. Didn't you ever hear two's company and three's a crowd? No. No, did you just make it up? Oh, now listen. Wait, there's an easy way to handle this. You're not leaving. Well, you two get along so well, it would be a pity to let a woman break up your happy home. Good night, Mike. The Case of the Murdering Misses. The Case of the Murdering Misses. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when money is your target in life, you give people something to shoot at. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking.